Are you one of those people that just automatically hates Petco and PetSmart? Or are you more like me and understand that most local mom and pop pet stores are buying their fish from the exact same suppliers as Petco and PetSmart? Well, if you don't cringe at the thought of shopping at a big box store, we're gonna share our list of the top 10 fish you can buy from Petco and PetSmart. You can go right now and get them. Don't be afraid. Okay, I know this might be a bit controversial to hardcore beta lovers because they don't like the idea of promoting stores that sell betas in cups. I get it. I don't like it either, but the sad reality is this is the way most pet stores sell these fish. Unfortunately, it's become common practice to sell betas in cups. Stores like Aquarium Co-op that have elaborate systems in place to display their betas are few and far between. I wish it wasn't so rare, but it is. So if we can get past the whole cup thing, let's talk about these fish. Betas are a great beginner fish for a lot of reasons. They're super easy to keep and they don't require a huge aquarium. Although we do recommend you keep them in at least five gallons. Give them some space to roam around. And one of the best things about them is they have incredible little personalities. I have a King Beta in a 15 gallon on my desk named Scott, and I swear he comes to the corner all the time as if he wants to talk to me. We're good friends, him and I. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, Lisa bought Scott for me at our local Petco. It's true. Guppies are another great starter fish, and you can almost always find plenty of them at Petco or PetSmart. They might not be the high dollar fancy guppies, but that's okay. Yeah, I like the fancy ones, but here's the thing. To me, I just love guppies. I don't care what color they are or what their tail looks like, so the assorted guppies you'll find at these stores are perfect for me. These fish will bring you plenty of activity, plenty of color, and as you probably already know, plenty of babies. Guppies are live bears, which means they don't lay eggs. They give birth to live, free-swimming babies, which is really cool because if you do your job as a fish keeper, you'll be surprised how regularly you'll walk by the tank and be like, hey, there's a teeny tiny baby in there. You might not think it's that big of a deal, but trust me, when it happens, you'll realize that this changes everything about the hobby for you. If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know that our focus is to help new fish keepers stay in the hobby. We believe it's the most important aspect of what we do. It's so important to us that we've even changed the name of our website to keepfishkeeping.com. Sorry, I just had to go for a little shameless plug there. Anyway, with our focus being on new fish keepers, we're big fans of companies that share the same focus and you'll find as we go through this list that almost all the fish are going to fall under the easy to keep beginner fish category. Platys definitely fit that description. These are easy to keep fish that can thrive in a wide range of water parameters and just like guppies, they're live bearers so be ready to have a bunch of them. These fish are available in a bunch of different varieties and colors. My personal favorite are the Mickey Mouse platies. If you look closely at their tails, I think you'll see where they got their name from. Keep their temperature around like 70 to 78 and the pH between 7 and 8 and keep their water clean and you're going to have an endless supply of these guys. And with them only costing about $2 a piece, you'll have no problem getting a bunch of them and having a big party in your tank. Just all kinds of activity. Mollies are very similar to platys in the way they look, the way they breed, and the water parameters they require. 
They're so similar, in fact, that I considered lumping them together along with the next fish on this list, but then I wouldn't have time to show you all this beautiful footage of the three different types of fish. Mollies are another great community fish that can easily mix with other community fish. You shouldn't have any major problems. When it comes to tank size for platies, mollies, and sword tails, which we're gonna talk about next, the rule book would tell you they can go in a 10 gallon aquarium. Yeah, they'll live in a 10 gallon, but let's do the right thing. Let's put them in a 20 gallon. Let's let them spread out and explore and just thrive. Plus, like I've been saying all along, these three fish are live bears that'll give you a constant supply of babies. If you have that extra 10 gallons, you'll have plenty of room to just grow a big old happy family. Swordtails are one of my personal favorite live bears. Take one look at them and you'll know exactly where they got their name from. I'm not going to spend a ton of time describing them because their care requirements are so close to the last two fish we've talked about. So rather than repeating the same things over and over again, let's just spend some time listening to some nice music and looking at some gorgeous fish. So you set up your first aquarium a while back and you've reached the point where you're starting to see some stuff around the tank, a buildup of algae and all kinds of other things, and you've decided it's time to get a fish to help you out with it. While I've never really been someone that recommends fish do the work for you in your aquarium, bristlenose plecos will certainly help you out. And not only that, they're super cool little catfish. Bristlenose plecos are perfect for smaller tanks because They'll patrol the entire tank and pick up small things left over by your fish. They'll munch on algae on your decorations and plants. And not only that, they look like something that you'd expect to see in like a science fiction movie. A 29 gallon tank will be perfect for them, but if all you have is a 20, they'll be okay. They'll thrive in almost any water parameters and you'll never have to be concerned about them bothering any of your other fish. And when it comes to feeding your bristlenose, this is where a lot of new fish keepers make a mistake. They think they'll be fine just scavenging around grazing on algae, and this just isn't true. Yes, they'll eat the algae, but they still need to be fed. And lucky for us, it's not difficult at all to find all kinds of food that's made specifically for them. If you want to know our personal favorite, it's the sinking wafers from Extreme. I'll put a link near the top of the description to our brand new website where you can pick up some of this along with any other fish keeping supplies you might need. Goldfish are as classic as they come. If you were to go up to a stranger on the street and say, hey, when I say aquarium, what's the first fish you think of? I bet you 90 to 95% of the people you ask would say goldfish. Yeah, I know you've seen the tanks at these stores full of feeder fish, but that's not what I'm talking about. When I say you can go to PetSmart or Petco and buy goldfish, I'm talking about things like Blackmore and Arandas, the ones we call fancy goldfish. These are amazing fish that are like little water puppies that'll not only look great, but they'll become a part of the family just like a dog or a cat would. They'll thrive in a wide range of water parameters, but there's one thing you need to know about goldfish and that's that they are total slobs. Yes, goldfish are big mess makers. So if you're gonna set up a tank for them, just be ready to stay busy keeping up with them. Don't tell yourself, Oh, goldfish are given away in carnival games. They're in fish bowls and even three-year-olds can keep them. So I don't need to do any maintenance. Goldfish are a lot of work, but they're so worth it. The three I have in my tank in my office keep me company all day long. They are my little buddies.
Remember when we talked about buying animals to help keep your aquarium clean? Well, there's another slow moving little worker out there that you can pick up all the time at Petco and PetSmart, and that's snails. Yeah, I know there's a lot of you that might have inherited some snails in a plant or something and they became a huge nuisance. So when you hear me say you should buy some snails, you're like, yeah, right. Well, just hear me out. I'm talking about really cool snails like assassin snails or mystery snails. These are big snails that come in tons of different shapes and colors and they do much more than just look cool. Just like the bristle nose, these little workhorses will patrol your tank picking up food from the substrate, algae from the glass and plants, and they're just not gonna move very quickly while they're doing it. If you have a community tank that doesn't have a group of Corydoras dancing around the bottom of the tank, I could honestly make the argument that that tank is incomplete. I've seen albino and peppered quarries almost every time I've gone into either PetSmart or Petco, and that should tell you something. If they're always there, that means they're always selling. If they're always selling, that means they're in tanks everywhere. These are amazing little catfish that stay primarily on the bottom, always searching around in every nook and cranny looking for something to eat. One thing to keep in mind with quarry cats is no matter which one you choose, they'll want to be kept in groups. Will they die if you only buy one? No, but they won't be very happy. The thing is, you'll usually be able to find quarries for like five to $10. So getting a group of them isn't exactly dirt cheap, but it won't break the bank either. And believe me when I tell you, it is well worth it. White cloud minnows are, in my opinion, as close to the perfect fish there is. They're small, so you don't need a huge tank. They thrive in cooler water, so you don't need a heater. And the last thing they want to do is bother any other fish. These fish are super cheap, and they'll have an immediate impact on your tank, because they're going to be all over the place. White clouds are also practically bulletproof fish, so if you're a beginner, these will be perfect for you. Grab a school of these guys, like six to eight, turn the temperature down and watch them do their thing. Oh, and if you've been thinking about setting up a tub outside and you wanna fill it full of some really cool fish, throw some white clouds in there and then throw some mosses down in the bottom so that the eggs can fall down in there and hatch down in the mosses. Before you know it, you'll have a tub full of gorgeous little fish that'll be all over the place. <laughs> 